In this series, we discuss two tools for training your inner beast that are human-specific. They work because we have the ability to be patient more than any other species on the planet, and we have the imagination to think about things in a way no other animal can. The one we discussed before is mindfulness meditation. The one we are discussing now is self-hypnosis. Zonstar at one point, probably about five years ago, asked me to discuss self-hypnosis, and I realized I had to do a lot more research before I could explain it to someone else. Most of you probably don't even remember this series because it ended about three years ago and it required me to sort through a ton of pseudoscience, which is sadly what most of the market is full of. I even found one book written by a PhD in psychology who I would have picked up, but his previous book was How to Astral Project, which I'm pretty sure is not currently backed by science. I know the use of words conscious and subconscious are unscientific, but they're useful in this case. Mindfulness meditation is used to calm the conscious mind and let the subconscious go. Self-hypnosis allows the conscious mind to do as it pleases, but it allows for you to reprogram and rearrange your subconscious mind. You can change your conscious mind very easily. It has a strong affinity for your frontal cortex. The subconscious is hard to change and built on conditioning. Most of the mind is wired to resist change to prevent a threat to your current identity and is very slow to change without special tricks. However, with self-hypnosis, one can hold a concept they want to be more like or an issue they want to remember more to work on, and they can stamp that conscious idea into their long-term subconscious mind. At least, that's how it works for me. First off, we must define hypnosis. Hypnosis is a state of narrow-minded focus where ideas can come in from the sides of your focus and affect your subconscious and conditioning. Focused reading or listening to someone to the point of not being fully aware of the rest of one's surroundings is a form of hypnosis. Being focused on that one task can let other ideas slip in. It's one of the ways peer pressure, groupthink, and the bandwagon effect can work without one realizing it. Magicians use this method when they get you so focused on one way of thinking, then close all other doors of possibility on you, so the only possible explanation is magic. Hypnosis is a way to use the mechanism that powers many natural biases in a positive way to reprogram your subconscious. Hypnosis is considered scary because it makes one open to suggestion. The difference between it and peer pressure is that you fully know you're opening yourself up and are able to be aware of it as opposed to peer pressure, which is passive suggestion. Self-hypnosis is very active and you're in charge and receiving suggestions from no one but your reflective mind. Hypnotherapy, according to the Handbook of Clinical Hypnosis, the most authoritative and credible source I could find on the subject, should only be administered alongside other forms of psychological therapy, which makes me even more skittish using sources by people who are certified hypnotherapists, and that is their only method of treatment. Hypnotherapy should only be done by a licensed practitioner, which is why I am only teaching self-hypnosis. You are the only one giving the suggestion, so you are fully in control and don't have to give up any power to anyone else. Some misconceptions about hypnosis are as follows. That being susceptible makes one weak and gullible. This is not true. It is more based on the efforts of the subject than the hypnotist. Also, it cannot and should not be used to try and access lost memories. Memories that are lost are almost always gone for good or disconnected by mechanical damage that needs healing to fix. What happens more often than not is because your memory is rewritten every time you access it, you are more likely to implant false memories than resurrect lost ones. I do this all the time unintentionally when I'm missing something and now can't tell if it's a memory I've created because of my strong imagination or if I actually remember my keys being there. An overactive imagination is where regression to discover past lives come from. People imagine and create stories all the time. They may have had an emotional affinity for a period or a character in a book. The hypnotist may implant suggestions triggering stories they made up that the subject now feels is real. During the 80s and 90s, there was a huge rash of memory implantation quacks who tried to regress people and actually implanted parental sexual abuse. People were mostly upper middle class and needed the drama and were drawn to conspiracy, so it made the memories easier to implant. They also had some emotional problems, so there had to be a reason for it. It destroyed a lot of family ties and caused a lot of court cases, and if I remember right, a few incarcerations, until the court began realizing just how unreliable human memory actually was. Another warning I need to say before we continue is do not think of hypnosis as a magic bullet. It had a profound positive effect on me, but is not for everyone. I also had a psychologist teach it to me along with other therapy. 
10% of people cannot use hypnosis. It shouldn't be used on or by people with borderline or dissociative personality disorders without a psychologist's input. If you're prone to epilepsy, like a YouTuber I know, it can get you to dangerous states if you have a certain variety. Stage hypnosis tends to occur because of peer pressure. People have an idea of what they think hypnosis is and how one acts in a hypnotic trance. And once they've had practice in the action of it, they can slip into that role very easily. It relaxes them and they play a part using acting, but believe they are being controlled. It is much like how people who speak in tongues believe via social pressure that they have this power that they can fall into these states. Ex-Christians who used to speak in tongues can easily resurrect that mindset and speak in tongues, showing it's more a skill like patting your head and rubbing your stomach, at the same time than being divinely inspired. Just like with drinking, you won't do something in hypnosis you wouldn't do in a normal state. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the psychological approach built on the idea that most of our psychological problems are caused because we learned reactive responses to situations. If we can retrain the person's reactions to a situation, they can have much better outcomes. Much of hypnosis uses the same procedures as mindful meditation. Relaxation is required until one gets the hang of self-inducing hypnosis on their own. It's just like meditation except what they focus on and how they focus is different. Hey there, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw from my channel, please subscribe and donate to my Patreon. If you have evidence to counter what I say, please provide it. If you would like to see the rest of the videos in this series, please click the links on the screen. Thank you so much.